Hi YouTubers, this is another video from your friendly neighborhood reviewer Evelyn. Today we're going to be reviewing the last two episodes of the Korean drama series Taxi Driver 2 starring Lee Jae-hyun. What a ride it's been to come to this point. This series had so much cameos that I was like, wow! Especially the one dollar lawyer. I hope it doesn't come to nothing this cameo. I'm going to verify this, but apparently they've given Taxi Driver a season three. So there's so much potential with these new characters they've introduced. So we get the beginning of episode 15, a flashback about Mr. O's story, how he came under, under the bishop. Apparently the bishop was a priest at first, but an evil priest. He went and kidnapped young kids and made them believe that they were abandoned by their parents and Mr. O was one of them. He didn't even remember as a child his real name. They didn't show if he really killed this little boy in the flashback but he took the name of the little boy that apparently he killed. And we can see for all intents and purposes there's no redeeming quality. The theory that I had in the last video that got blown out of the water. Now there's a bit of issues with the pacing of this series and the and the editing but the last two episodes like wow shock after shock after shock so we get put forward where we saw in the previous episode that the bishop was disguising himself as a client he goes and tells Kim Dong-gi in the taxi that oh my son has been framed he's a witness to this tampering of like money funds and all that kind of stuff the team goes and helps the client per se Kim Dong-gi goes in as a guy's of a crazy prisoner because apparently there was a bounty on this guy's head and so does the other two mechanics. Throughout the episode, Kim dong is trying to figure out what the heck is going on. This is so too easy. And on top of them, on the previous episode, the police chief got exposed. Other scenes, the police chief calls Mr. Jang and says, I can help you. If you can help me get out of this situation, I can help expose all the corruption. And Mr. Jang says on the phone, how, uh, how can I trust you? And the police chief says, check this file, which Mr. Jang does. So we get the sense that the the prison is like owned by the bishop and we see that people of relevant rank in the bishop's organization they go around with this ring this insignia and we end up finding out that the bishop went and manipulated another devotee he went and exposed his own crime to make it more legitimate so the team would investigate so kim Dogi has you know they all successfully did the mission that they helped the the victim or the witness in the jail go off to the court but as they're going into the bus kim Dogi gets recalled back into the prison and he tells the other two mechanics not to worry as we think that kim Dogi is held prisoner like by mr o who's there in the prison he also tells Kim dong gi that he's kidnapped the other, his other friends. But there's a big raid type scene in, in episode 15 where Mr. O tells Kim dong gi to meet him in the office, but that's if he survives or the prisoners are loose in the jail. It was really interesting and it was like, oh my god, this seems like the raid. But a little far-fetched that, okay, Kim dong gi they could come out looking injured. For season two, the grittiness, I think, got a little bit washed away from season one because in season one, there was that grit there and season two it was more there's the there was the comedy there and there was the action but the editing and the filming of the action scene wasn't that great as season one so kim Dogi manages to go to mr o and then mr o has him you know showing oh i went and kidnapped all your, your friends go young and the other two mechanics but kim Dogi. We find out he got told by Mr. Jang that it was all a setup, it was all a ploy. So Kim Dong Gi and the whole team was double tricking Mr. O. And on the top of that, it was still, you know, Kim Dong Gi was still held in the prisoner and the bishop went and turned on Mr. O, put him in the jail cell. It's also part within the episode where Kim Dong Gi makes the plan of diverting all the attention to them and not their plan. So therefore, Mr. Jang, after finding the case file which the the ex-police chief that was going to get arrested told him about and he went and personally met the bishop in which he knew that Mr. Jang would be there. They would knock him out and potentially kill him but Mr. Jang manages and he goes to the prison to go to reveal to Mr. O a very very heartbreaking truth that his name wasn't Oh Ha Jun, it was King Da Un. He was kidnapped and his parents was trying to find them. And Mr. Jang tells Mr. O oh that I met your parents a decade ago in my foundation and they, were, they never stopped looking for you. 
at 10 years plus and Mr. O's like thinking well, not, what am I meant to do with this information but Mr. Jang know that he wouldn't escape the prison either because they'll go and kidnap him yet again which that does happen now there's a heartbreaking twist that might as well reveal now that Mr. O realizes that the bishop for the first initiation test of him murdering somebody inadvertently tricked Mr. O in killing his own father and when I saw that I was like wow this changed completely Mr. O's story you, you almost feel sorry for him it doesn't make well he was brainwashed he was brainwashed that's the only thing that we got to say Kim Do Gi and Mr. Jang they get carted off into a police van to an undisclosed warehouse where the other two mechanics and the girl are then following him but before that um, Kim Dong Gi has a interaction with the bishop and the bishop goes and sounds off the whistle that which causes Kim Dong Gi to have another PTSD attack my only gripe about this series is that they didn't really address more about how Kim Dong Gi will resolve his you know trauma maybe that before season 3 oh my god all this kind of like uh, cliffhangers you know teasing the audience audience like everybody's now captured in this undisclosed warehouse because obviously as the mechanics and the girl was following Kim Dong Gi and Mr. Jang where they're held captive in the police van they also get captured so all four of them are captured and they have all the police guys everybody there surrounding them with guns and you think all hope is lost and then boom the taxi comes in and we get the introduction of this actress. I have no idea what her name is. I don't even know if I've seen her in any K-dramas, but let me tell you, God damn it, she is gorgeous. Gorgeous to a T. And we end up finding out she was the first taxi driver before Kim Dong Gi. And I'm like, wow, my God, she comes in driving. She comes in with a shotgun, the glasses, and you're thinking, how could they only bring her in for this little? Bit. Would they bring her back for season 3? Because what's the point of these cameos to like tantalize the audience if there's no you know follow up that has to be season 3. So ultimately for episode 16, Kim Do Gi fights Mr. O on the rooftop because Mr. O he calls the telephone mobile number Mr. Jam but Kim Dong Gi picks up and Mr. O you can kind of get a sense that he wants to rectify everything he's done and he just feels remorse you can see remorse in his face a little bit uh, how the heck could I have done all of this and the worst fact that he killed his own father that was just like the nail on the head so everybody goes together there was a really cool scene as well when the, uh, the woman and Kim Dong Gi interact and they're like yeah I've heard about you and she's like oh I've heard about you you and the trans Translation was like, I heard somebody drives as nasty as I do. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> that kind of like street, that like, kind of like intensity, not intensity, but just like that level of cool factor there. It was just to share just a little bit of that interaction. So she says that she'll deal with the bodies, like with the people that she, she shot. Let's not go about it. She'll deal with the bodies while the whole team goes with the final showdown in which they go and put sleeping gas in the chapel where all bishops, minions, level, you know, people of prominence are there. They go and drug them up, put them in individual jail cells. And then you have the final battle of Mr. O versus Kim Dong Gi, because Mr. O tells the bishop, lay all the blame on me, just give me one thing, and we kill Kim Dong Gi. So they have that epic fight. Now, this is where I can see both actors were going out hard. Obviously not to really hit hit, but there was some contact, you could feel it. That was the grittiest part there, reminiscent of season one. But unfortunately, Kim Dong Gi has a better, I guess, experience, or maybe Mr. O just had enough. He tells Kim Dong Gi, thank you, thank you for helping me reclaim my name and let me help you because the bishop was there sitting right ringside with a gun there. So he goes out and he just looks at Mr. O and says, How pathetic, basically. They're about to shoot Kim Dong Gi, but Mr. O pushes Kim Dong Gi to one side and he gets shot multiple times and he goes over the rooftop of the prison with the bishop. Now what a sad ending for Mr. O. Good, what a sad ending and Kim Dong Gi was legitimately shocked. So episode 16, the end, the ending part's a little bit funny with the editing. So we have that and then we have one year later and then we get a case in the military which a, a soldier went and reported about you know, an assault. We have Kim Dong Gi going back to the military. But then again, what about him hearing the whistles? What's the context behind him overcoming his trauma? And we get a small cameo from the actress or from the flower of evil of Kim Jong Gi. When I saw her, like, oh my god, I love, I love the flower of evil. I like that. 
that series is, I, I can watch that multiple times with the complexity, the plot, the relationships in which the actress, I'll put up her name, she was the wife in the show as well as police cop and this time she's in the army. She, we see Kim Dong Il go and address himself to the lieutenants or whatever and then we see her seeing Kim Dong Il and she salutes him. But Kim dong doesn't say anything and walks by and she's like shocked. And then we get the end of, you know, 16 of, of the series. I, wow, what a weird ending with no much context to it. Like, what did I think about season 2 initially? I just think the grittiness factor went down quite a bit. And I think it was more like the PG element to it. And I don't like this no follow-ups with it because Kim dong he is... At first you think, oh, he's a two-dimensional character, but there's, there is complexity with him. And there's also the slow burn romance between Go Young and Kim dong Gi that you think, come on, I already kiss, but they're like, cooking this romance to God knows where. Now, when they gotta really acknowledge each other's feelings. But hey, I complain about season two was, but just to confirm what the season three, most likely I'll be watching it. But anyway, as I leave you always, stay safe. To any new viewers, we appreciate it. we can hit the subscribe button and leave your comments down below what you thought about season two and will you be watching season three. So I'll leave you always.